Welcome back to the Waterboy UK and following up from the previous build which was the Harvey water softener today we're going to do the Kinetico and it is probably one of the most popular block salt softeners on the market. Let's take a look at the Kinetico. It's a twin tank system. All the internal parts are contained in this valve. The valve is split up into different levels. Level one being where all the gears are and also the discs which control what the hardness level is and how much soft water it can produce. Level three, very popular gear what contains the um, seals which need changing from time to time. We've got two tanks, we've got the main tank containing the resin and we've got an auxiliary tank which is classed as a slave tank which comes off the side. So once this tank has expired it swaps over onto the slave tank where it can continue softening but at the same time these valves inside here regenerate this first tank without interruption. As a whole, this is a very reliable machine. We'll talk you through some of the things today that you would need to do if you were servicing. In the level three and four section, there's some seals. In the level one, some control pores, which sometimes split. But very reliable machine and very easy to work on. So there's two variations of this particular Kinetico. One's the HE and one's the HF. So if you look at them, the only thing different is this level on the top. To look at it, there's no real difference. So if I just put this aside and turn it over, the differences between the HF and the HE is the gearing, what's inside, the nozzle, which feeds the water through to drive this gearing. And it's also stated that the resin inside the tanks are different as well in the HE. It's a mixed bed resin which allows the water to go through easier. If we look at some of the historical level ones, this has got a white screen on the top and they changed this to a smoked brown screen around about 2008 time. So you can sort of guess what sort of age your machine is if you get it. If you look inside, some of the parts now are in the cradle and the nozzles are very much different but predominantly very very similar and it hasn't changed much since the 1970s when it was first built okay let's remove the housing which holds in the inlet and the outlet connectors and these connectors they just pop out and if you look very well designed They've got two O-rings which seal quite tightly inside that housing. Both the same and if we look at the sizes of it, they're around about 30mm and we're going for a three quarter connector. We're then going to remove bolts at the top for the level one as always I like to use hand tools to remove these bolts these are stainless steel bolts which are very strong but they're actually feeding into plastic Socket, so they're quite easily stripped so by using a ratchet hand ratchet you can sort of get a feeling of what it feels like and prevent any kind of stripping I'm just going to work my way around these
There's eight in total. There is allegedly replicas of this valve. Um, but if you have got a genuine Kinetico product, if you look at this label just here, it's got the Kinetico badge and it's also got the US patents on there. It is American made. I believe the Americans are leading the way forward with water treatment. And now comes the level one. That's the gasket between the level one and level two. If we take the level two off, it's already got a gasket inside there, and that's covering this little pattern of channels. That's level two off. The next section, three, four, and five, come off together. And if you slowly pull them apart, you'll see why. got control valves which seat inside the level four we've got a little rocker and if we pull the three and four apart you can see we've got the quad seals and the control valves now each section of the regeneration these valves will be in a different position and I'll put the different configurations of these positions in the link below. Okay, with the valve off, we can take away the slave tank or the auxiliary tank. The pins just come out, just like before. The pins have got a little ball bearing in, what a sprung, and they fit through, connect, with another little bracket underneath. They can just be pushed out. And then separate the two tanks and they were joined by two connectors both with double o-rings on that's how to separate the tanks okay reassembling first of all we need to put this gasket back on what came off the way I remember it, if you look down this bit there, can you see that right angle? We'll look for that in the middle of this gasket. And also, across the top of this piece there, we don't really need a, 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 um, a seal on there, so we just put that across and it fits perfectly. And the bit across the nozzle is missing. Okay, so the level two, uh, look for this little gap here. And that's going to sit on top of that nozzle. But if you look, there's some locating pins. And that locating pin will hopefully go into that one just there. And if it's all lined up correctly, it will slot in. And that's level two in there. Take the level three. And if you look at it, there's two positions for the control valves and then in the middle one and the quad seals will turn upside down 
And if you just give that a little shake backwards and forwards, it will position itself in there. If it's not quite in line, it won't go in. There you go, it will clip in. That's level three. This next bit, which rocks backwards and forwards, that sits on top. I'm going to take the final section. Again, look how this end dent is just there with these control valves in. And this piece is going to sit around this control valve just there. So what we're going to do, just let it dangle. So it sits inside, do a little shake and they will go in. And if we're in the right position, they will clip in. So there you go, it's all in position. And we're going to have to put this section into there. And if you look at the little hole there, which you, um, takes the brine drawer, we can position that over the top, and the locating pins will sit it in. And now that fits perfectly. Okay, we're going to put the tank back onto the valve and tank one. So we just pop those in. These are lubricated with a silicone grease so that they go in easy and if you've got enough on without any effort really they'll just push in nicely we can then take the bracket and the two pins which will push in and they will space it out to the correct space to lock them into position just put that second bracket underneath and it will clip in and make it nice and secure okay we're going to put the valve back on to the top of the tank one make sure these are in place and also that they're nicely straight cooked and not damaged both of them are fine and then those two yellow pins are going to sit in this gap just there so what we're going to do is roll that on top And that's going to locate in and form a nice seal. If you look at the levels all the way around, they are nice and flush. So we're going to put the bolts back in. We check the bolts for any kind of bits of plastic or burrs before we go in. Like I said, they're stainless steel, so there shouldn't be any corrosion. And if you put them in until it fits the bottom, Remember this is metal going into plastic, so you don't want to start making a new thread. So if you just turn them backwards, you'll feel it click into position. And you know you're in the same thread. Let's just watch that again on another one. So I dropped it down. Just turn it backwards. There you go, it's dropped into position again. So it's pushed down. There you go, it's dropped into that existing thread. There you go. Now, if you don't do this, it will cut another thread and you'll find it very difficult to put it in. Alright, we know that they're in the thread, let's tighten them all up. We want to try and pull this down at the same sort of pressure all the way around. So I pull one down, then go diagonal over to the opposing one. Bring that down, just so you feel that the bolt is beginning to push this level one down to so compress it. 
and then I'm going to go across ways to this one and diagonal to this one if you're getting any kind of resistance you're cutting a new thread because it should go in really smooth then jump to the next one pull that down across over to this one And that's it sealed back together let's pop the inlet and outlet connectors this is very well thought out and I'll tell you why some manufacturers have these welded together and what they don't take into account is that as water's passing in and out a vibration occurs and it eventually splits that weld with this you still get the vibration and if it does happen to leak these o-rings can just be changed quite easily because what happens they flatten out a little bit now it's a lot easier to change a couple of o-rings than it is to try and glue something up once it's um, snapped and that is a big problem for one particular manufacturer but not this one put the clip on and the sprung ball bearing push that in and click it into position last thing to do Connect the brine valve up and also the regeneration pipe. The brine valve is a quarter inch pipe, the regen is a three eighths, and that's a complete rebuild. Please don't forget to hit subscribe and hit the bell as well to keep informed with new videos.